Hello everyone, this is me Shraddha from How to Electronics. In this video, we will learn about the interfacing of soil and PK sensor with Arduino and OLED display. The soil nutrient content can be easily measured using an PK soil sensor and Arduino. Measurement of soil ammonium content like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium is necessary to determine how much additional nutrient content is to be added to the soil to increase the crop fertility. The soil fertility is detected using an PK sensor. A major component of soil fertilizer is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The knowledge of the soil nutrient concentration can help us to learn about the nutritional deficiency or evidence in soil used to endorse plant production. There are multiple methods of measuring the soil nutrient content like using some option sensors or using the spectrometer. But the spectral analysis method of determining the nutrient content is not convenient and the drawback is the data are only 60-70% to 70 correct. While comparing the spectral analysis method with traditional weight chemistry methods, the accuracy of the product is yet to be fully resolved given the paucity of the data in that regard. So here we will use a GXCT soil and pick a sensor to detect nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium in a soil. The GXCT soil and pick a sensor is a low cost, quick responsive, high precision and portable and it works with Modbus RS485. The advantage of this sensor over a traditional detection method is that it gives very fast measurement and data are highly accurate. All you need is to insert its probe in soil and get the reading using Arduino. Thus, you can easily make your own soil and pick a meter. So let's learn in detail about the interfacing of soil nutrient sensor or NPK sensor with Arduino and display the NPK data in OLED display. The sponsor for this video is NextPCV who are of the giant PCV manufacturer in current industry. You can order the PCV by uploading the Gerber file. Then, select the PCV size, quantity, and color. Then select the country for shipment and submit an order. And there is a good news to tell you. Now you can get commission by inviting your friends to register and place an order on NextPCV. All you need is using this link, invite friends to sign up on nextpcv.com. You can do this by sharing the link on social media or email. Once your friend registered, you will get a $5 coupon. And once your friend placed an order, you will get a 10% commission. The commission will be recharged into your balance and you can use that to deduct the order amount. Now let's learn about the soil sensor first. So this is a soil and pick a sensor that I recently got from some Chinese vendor. This soil sensor is suitable for detecting the content of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium in the soil. It helps in determining the fertility of the soil and the sensor can be buried in soil for a long time. It has a high quality probe, rust resistance, electrolytic resistance, salt and alkali corrosion resistance. Therefore, it is suitable for all kinds of soil. The sensor has high measurement accuracy, fast response speed, and good interchangeability, and it can be used with any microcontroller. The sensor operates on 9 to 24 volt and power consumption is very low. While talking about the accuracy of the sensor, it is up to within 2%. Now let's see some of its specification. It works between 9 to 24 volt supply. The measuring range is from 0 to 1999 mg per kg. The operating temperature is between 5 to 45 degrees Celsius. The resolution of NPK data is 1 mg per kg. While talking about the precision, it's up to 2% plus or minus. The output signal can be read using a Modbus RS485. It has multiple baud rate like 2400, 4800 and 9600. The sensor has a very hard predictive layer made using IP68 rating. To make a soil and PK meter, we need following components. As already discussed, we need soil and pick a sensor and few samples of different type of soil. Meanwhile, I'm using red soil from my garden. The sensor has four wires and has works using Modbus to DTR converter along with 12 volt supply. So here is the MX485 Modbus module from Maxim Integrated. The module need to be connected to the NPK sensor to get the NPK reading. I have explained in detail about this module in my website article. You can read about this all the pin function. We need to have volt DC adapter or you can use any voltage supply from 9V to 24V to power on the sensor. I have assembled the entire circuit and breadboard, so you may need a breadboard for that too. Apart from the breadboard, you will need any Arduino board. In my case, I am using Arduino Nano board which is breadboard friendly. 
Similarly, I used a square C only display where I can display the NPK data. I've shared the purchase link for all the components. So here is the complete schematic and circuit for this project. The R0 NDI pin from Modbus is connected to D2 and D3 of Arduino using software serial. Similarly, we have to enable DE and RE high, which is done by connecting them to the D7 and D8 pin of Arduino. The NPK sensor has four wires. The brown one is VCC, which needs a 9V to 24V power supply. The ZND pin, which is black in color, needs to be connected to the ground of Arduino. The blue wire, which is the B pin, is connected to the B pin of MX485. And the yellow wire, which is the A pin, is connected to the A pin of MX485. The SST1306 OLED display is an I2C module. The OLED display VCC and GND are connected to 3.3V and ground of Arduino. Similarly, its STA and SCL pins are connected to the A4 and A5 of Arduino. So here is the complete assembly on the breadboard. This is the Arduino Nano board. This one, the OLED display connected through I2C pins of Arduino. The MAX485 Modbus pin are connected exactly as for the circuit. The sensor blue wire and yellow wire is connected to Modbus A and B pin. And I use 12V to power on the sensor. Now let's move to the code part of the project. But before that, read the instruction manual that is provided with the sensor. The instruction manual that I receive is in Chinese language. I don't know what is written here, but I can understand the technical part of this manual which can be used in code. So in the code, we begin with software serial and we define the TX and RX pin as pin 2 and 3. The ADA for GFX and SST1306 library is for OLED display. In these lines, we define the parameters for OLED display and create instances. The RE and D pin of the sensor is defined here. Now the most important part is this byte data. This works as a command to retrieve the data from using Modbus from the NPK sensor. This one is for getting nitrogen value in soil. I got this command from the instruction manual. You can see this in this manual. The Chinese documentation is still worked. I use this same line in the code. Similarly, this line is for phosphorus. The instruction byte or data is again given in this manual. I use the same. The same thing applied to potassium also. The potassium instruction byte is also taken from the manual. Alright, in the setup section, we initialized serial begin and mode begin along with only display and kept RE and E as output. We assign three variables as value 1, value 2, and value 3, or nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Then, using this line, we display the NPK value in serial monitor as well as only display. In this byte function, we are enabling DE and RE pin as high, and using the size of function and array assignment, we are retrieving the value of nitrogen from the sensor. These are modbus command which is little complicated. Then we are printing the value of data in hexadecimal and converting it into decimal. Again we are retrieving the value of phosphorus and potassium using the same command. That is why I explained why this line is very important. If you don't know the value of register or data you cannot read it. Now all you need is to select the right board, right board and upload the data to Arduino Nano board. After uploading code, the OLED will display the initializing message and soon it will display the value of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium as zero. So here is a sample of soil I have taken in a container. Now when I dip the sensor prof in the soil, it will start collecting the soil data and soon it will display the content of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. So the nitrogen in the soil is about 220 mg per kg, phosphorus about 90 mg per kg and potassium about 80 mg per kg. When the sensor is removed from the soil, the value soon reaches to zero. And when it is dipped again, it will show some other values. So this is how we can use NPK sensor with Arduino to measure the soil NPK content or soil nutrient. That's all from today's video. Thank you for watching.